Ladies and gentlemen, we are back here in the building. Sean White coming to you back in the Greatness Center in Atlanta, Georgia. And Greatness Week rolls on here. And we are doing double duty on a Friday evening. And I want to tell you, for all those that had the opportunity to attend uh, the last uh, podcast segment, which that we did with Minister Erica Turner, Man, I tell you, that was awesome. That was truly, truly amazing. So if you haven't had a chance to watch that um, podcast, we recently just did that not too long ago. Please feel free to catch the replay. You can go on my page and view that. And believe me, it was fantastic and you'll be in for a treat. And tonight, with our next guest, is no exception. We have someone that is the founder of She Boston Up. The one and only Dr. Brianna James hailing all the way from the West Coast. So she's so excited, folks, that, man, you know, we're just going to go ahead and jump into this thing. That's what I'm talking about, right? Forget all, forget, forget all legend trees and everything else, right? About to listen to greatness. So do me a favor, if you will. If you catch us on the live, put in hashtag live. Let us know exactly where you're tuning in from. And if you should happen to catch us on a replay, go ahead and put in hashtag replay. This is Transformation Greatness along with the Small Business Network podcast, episode 111. And we have a doctor that's coming in the house and she's going to diagnose some things. And I just recommend that if you're in the listening audience, definitely have your questions, have your inquiries um, ready because she's ready to go ahead and bring it. And this is going to be such an honor and a privilege to be able to do so. So waiting right now as far as for our special guest here. Um, she may have her phone in portrait mode. Yep. <clears throat> so Dr. James, what you have to do, you have to turn your phone landscape because I believe as far as you probably have it the other way in portrait. And that's the reason why it declined. So you got to have it in landscape the other way. So what I'm going to do, let me see. I should be able to bring her on this way. I'm pretty certain she she had it in the other way to portrait mode, which a lot of people do, which it is all good. But let's see here. Hmm. No, I don't see her. Dr. James, if you can just say hello, hello. If you can just type in the comment section, say hello, hello. There she go. So now, okay, I did. It's not reading. Hold on. All right. So I'm going to send it over to you. And you should begin that right now. Let's see. There you go. See? Through the power of social media, guys. She is coming on, and there she go. And she already has her serious look on, too. Boy, I tell you, she is not ready. She is ready. She is not going to play games with y'all. You see she got her game face, and even though she's the other way, which I don't mind doing it that way, but, okay. Now she, I can't see nothing. Now she says she can't see anything. Okay, so, Dr. James, what you got to do is you got to flip your camera. All right, let's flip it. There you go. Can you hear us? I can hear you all, but I can't. So, like, I can't see you, but I see the comments. But you can't see us, and you're on your phone? I am on my phone, but you can see my face, though. But you you can't see me. Nope. Interesting. You know, tech stuff is always interesting with me. You know, I just kind of roll with it. I'm trying to tell you, but you can hear me loud and clear, correct, Dr. James? I can hear you loud and clear, darling. All right. Excellent, excellent. So we have here Miss Tiffany Berry in the house. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And she said she's here to connect with Rachel Morgan and Cynthia. I have no idea who that is. But anywho, we're going to go ahead and get this um, train in motion. I'm hearing a lot of stack when you're in, Dr. James. So maybe you have to close the laptop. Or come up with Facebook from your laptop. I did. We're going to put that to sleep. Let's see if that does any better. Let's see. Did that help any? Mm, just seeing a lot of the static on it. My end, my end, my end. Okay. But as look, I may uh, actually then have to take this outside in the car because every once in a while, my my system does this and it pulls static simply because I'm in the house. But it hasn't been doing it all week. That's interesting. <laughs> interesting. 
There's time for everything. There is. So let's just see as I walk out if it gets better. Okay. okay. Awesome. Awesome. And we have and we here have my soul sister Tammy Morrison Tammy in the Morris building. Welcome, building. Welcome, 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 welcome. Ladies, 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 and ladies and gentlemen, this is Transformation Bridges along with the Small Business Network Podcast, episode 111. We have here our very special guest here. We have a doctor in the house, guys, Dr. Brianna James. This is awesome. Did it get any better? It's still it's still the same, but you know what? We 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 make it happen over here. Sometimes I gotta do what I gotta do. Let's just figure this out. Hold on. Absolutely. Look at that beautiful scenery too, guys. Any better in here? Can you hear us? I can hear you. Is it any better in here? Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, I mean, fine. I can still hear the echo in the background, but it's all good. But let's go ahead and get this party started. Cause I know you're a very crazy, crazy woman. So, for the listener audience, if you could just introduce to yourself a little bit. First of all, who are you? And tell tell the audience a little bit about of what you do, Dr. James. Someone um, looking at the comments and said there's terrible feedback. Yeah, Tammy, is it still? Oh, the feedback is on me, Tammy. Is that better? Because I, I I don't hear the echo no more. Is that better, Tammy? Tammy, Tammy, can you hear me? Tammy. So that's a lot better. Okay, she said yes. Okay. So Perfect. we don't we don't have that problem no more. It seems like. <laughs> Just like Excellent. This. Let so, me know if you can actually see me because I can't see myself. Yeah, I can. I, I, okay. I can see you perfectly. I can perfect. see you perfectly. So let so let's so let's go on and get and, and get with this here because the start of the show is, is ready. So for the listener <laughs> audience, if you can just tell us a little bit of who you are and what is it that you do, Dr. James? Absolutely. Well, I am Dr. Brianna Boss James, aka Dr. Boss. I am the founder of She Bossing Up. It is an organization and a movement where we help entrepreneurial and professional women who just desire more in life. They just know there's something more. They need something more. We help them to redefine themselves, to identify their skills, gifts, and talents, and then to be able to use those skills, gifts, and talents to boldly walk in their God designed purpose and calling, and then ultimately, to live their dreams out loud. So we get mm. to help women boss all the way up. And boss is a double acronym for boldly overcoming struggles and setbacks as we help them positively transform themselves, body, occupation, soul, and spirit. Holistic bossing up. Mm. That's what I'm talking about. Yes. Mm. And that's something mm -hmm. that was not created as of yesterday. That you you can yeah. tell because it's so crystal clear and defined that a person is like, wow. So that now begs the question. So who is Dr. James? How did Dr. <laughs> James get to this point? We want to know a little bit more about your backstory, right? Because I mean, just by the title and everything you just mentioned, it's like, wow, she's she she's like a, a superwoman, a wonder woman, right? But <laughs> you know, I mean, come on now, share the goodies. Talk share to us. the goodies. Right. Um, I mean, it's a story. Struggles and setbacks hit us all, tests and trials hit us all. Um, I've had lots of health challenges in my life, um, gone through things straight all out rebellion, trying to figure out life, getting things together. Um, but the crux of what I'm doing now started back, um, even the formation of it all the way back in high school, I was suffering through a whole lot of pain and I was cheerleader. And one day at, work, at practice, I was a base because I'm I was bigger than the other girls, so I got to be the base, and I was popping a girl off my back, and everything was going fine, and we had one more round to go, and so I got up, got her up there, mounted her up, everything was good, but when she came down, she kneed my back all the way down, and when I stood up, something in my back popped, and then I fell back down, and I ended up with chronic back spasms, along with 
headaches and other body aches and pains and things to the point where I was in high school walking around on a cane every day. I used to lay on desks, lay on the floor. I had some really nice teachers though. Whatever I can do to try to help the pain. And at one point I got up to 15 pills in a day and I was absolutely exhausted. I was tired of the pain. Nothing was working. Everything was horrible. And I got to the point where I was tired. And I was just like, God, I'm tired. I don't have time for this. And I was sitting in my bed. I remember it clear as day. I grabbed a bunch of pills and I said, I'm going to just take these. I'm going to go downstairs. My mama has a bottle of wine down there. I'm going to take these pills. I'm going to take this wine and I'm going to just go to sleep and I'm going to be done. And it's good. And right when I touched the top of the first bottle, I, my whole body froze. It was like I was in an immediate paralysis. And I got this open vision of my mother doing this crazy thing she used to do, coming upstairs, singing all the songs and everything. And she came upstairs and she found me. And all of a sudden, the happy singing songs were gone. She broke down. Everything was absolutely horrible. Just the detriment. And I just saw it was kind of like... Um, uh, Ebenezer Scrooge goes back and sees all the different um, time settings. It was yeah. kind of like that. I got to see an extended version of the impact of my ending my own life, what that would do to those closest to me. And it was the most horrible sight I've ever seen. And I came out of this, this paralysis and was like, oh my goodness, okay, I can't do that. This is very selfish. I might not value my life right now because I'm in pain, but... Right. Apparently, my life has some kind of purpose. I have no clue what it was, is or was at that point. And so I threw the pills down. Of course, I was mad because I could kill myself. <laughs> and I really wanted to in that moment. Mm -hmm. um, but I had to think of other people in that moment. And at that point, I got this deep-rooted sense of there's something that God has for me to do. So much so that he wouldn't let me in my life. Like, literally, body paralyzed. Right. And you fast forward, just the different health challenges that I've gone through, constant headaches and migraines and body spasms, all the things, all the way to around about 2017, I thought life was good. We hit this moment. I got involved with, I'm going to call it a redo with my ex. Everything was good. We were engaged to be married, absolutely happy and excited. All the things were great. Right. And then that didn't work. It was an epic failure of great proportion. And I ended up back in my childhood bedroom, looking around at the walls, wondering how did I get here? Right. I'm not doing what I want to do, not doing what I even think I should be doing. Um, I'm in my little twin bed in literally the room I grew up in. What is my life? Failed relationship. Job was good. You know, it was decent, but I was completely unsatisfied, even in the midst of everything on the outside of me looking tight and right. Mm -hmm. I was absolutely miserable. I don't know if you know what it feels like to be doing great things, but to be miserable in the yeah. midst of it. That's who I was every single day. And in that moment, I started questioning things. Why am I wearing what am I wearing? Why does my hair look the way my hair looks? Why? Why is this thing even in my room? Um, I mean, down to the car drive, like finite little detail things up yeah. to big things. Why am I now thinking the way that I'm thinking? Yeah. What's going on? And I went through this whole five-step process. And by the end of it, it was, Brianna, you're just not doing what you're supposed to do because you've made decisions in your life that are counterproductive to where it is that you're supposed to go. God has begun to tell you what you're supposed to do and you're not doing it. Point blank period. You are the problem. You are the common denominator. So you have to be the one to take care of this thing and fix it and get it together. Mm -hmm. And it took me a little process, but I started taking care of that thing and getting it together and I started fixing it. I used my process and began to get my identity together, realize who I am in Christ and that I'm enough and that I have everything that I'm supposed to have. And all I literally have to do is start doing it. And that, what has me on this journey now and god called me to do the boss up thing so that's what i'm doing wow that is truly truly amazing i mean because during that whole entire time when you started really questioning and asking yourself you know and going through that five step phase you could have easily at any point said eh, you know god yeah i hear what you're saying but eh, i think i'm gonna go ahead and do it this way right or do it that yeah. way right because you allow for pride and ego and what so many people a a actually do a lot of pride and ego but it's amazing how you mentioned you had to be and i'm noticing the theme with all of my guests 
they're saying as far as that they had to be at a particular point in order for God to really speak to them to yes. download an idea or just to um, confirm a gift or a skill set or talent that he, you know, has placed. I'm saying, you know, God is Jesus, but mm -hmm. to the God of your understanding, right? That there was a gift, there was a calling, there was something that was rebirthed into you. And now uh, for you to truly recognize that. But another thing too, you were at a crossroad that even though you was given that download for doing what you're doing now, you still had a choice. So did it feel like as far as that like you was like at a crossroads, right? That right. you can either do this and really start transforming your life or continue on what you're currently doing and the results will be who knows. Did, did, did you feel that I was like at a crossroads that you were that you were at? Yeah. I guess that's the question I was trying to ask. It was a complete cross so it's like you're standing right there and you can either go left or you go right and whichever decision that i made determined it and everything inside that lazy part that's yeah. on the deep down inside of me, yeah. that like yeah. going to the right is going to be it's going to cause extra struggle it's going to cause me to really search myself and that little conversation that i had with myself that was not an easy conversation i mean i had the ugly face cry and tears going on while i was uncovering myself and unpacking things looking at past hurts and traumas and wounds and just realizing one what i've done to myself what others have done to me, how, where I've allowed myself to go and what I've subjected myself to. That was some real stuff. But realizing that if I don't do what God has called and designed me to do, I'm going to continue living life just existing mm -hmm. and not fully living, not thriving. I have dreams, goals, and desires, but going the way that I was going, I was never going to get there. It was just going to be like a hamster wheel type thing, just spinning, mm. but going nowhere. I was, I'm, I was tired of that. And even though I knew the path ahead of me was going to be rough, if you will, because at the end of the day, when you have greatness that you're called to do, there is going to be struggle. The enemy is not just going to let me go out and do what thus says the Lord. That's that's not happening. Yeah, and so, that. yeah, <laughs> so, so I had to realize mm -hmm. that I know it's going to be hard. I know the enemy is going to come at me. And I also know God is going to allow things to happen to me because he needs me to be refined in a certain way to be able to be fit and prime for where he has me, um, where he desires for me to be in the end, in the end game. And so, I just knew I had to be there and I just I'd rather take where God has me going versus my own self because I I just don't know. I'm I'm horrible with making decisions for myself when it comes to things like that. I like to let God lead me and guide me. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. For all those that's just tuning in, welcome once again here to episode 112. Here with Transformation Greatness Loan, the Small Business Network podcast. We have here Dr. Brianna James. So Dr. James was in the listening audience. You're not the only Dr. James. <laughs> <laughs> which, 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 by the way, um, where did you receive your doctorate from, Dr. James? So I got my doctorate online, RGC University. I did both my master's and my doctorate online. I absolutely love online school. It makes everything great. <laughs> and, and, and I'm sorry, you, you said you got your doctorate from, come again, RGC where was that from? The university. And what did, what did you specialize in? And it was a specialization in entrepreneurship with a focus on or development. So I love helping businesses grow, start up, formulate. I like seeing things flourish. Awesome. Awesome. So let's go ahead and dive more into um, your, your firm, She Boss Enough. Yes. I love how the way you talk about it, because when you talk about it, there's a certain passion. There's a certain flair. And that's something in which that when I'm mentoring other entrepreneurs and when I ask them as far as what is exactly that they do or what company that they're with, I don't hear that same level of passion, right? I don't feel that zeal. They were like, oh, well, I'm with so-and-so and, you know, we do this and we do that. And they give me the whole bio and the whole spiel and the whole product line and blah, 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 blah. And want to put me to sleep to tell you the truth. But for yours, when, when you talk about your brand, and your firm, there's a passion and a zeal. So can you explain more to the listener audience, what exactly is she bossing up, right? And what is the core? You spoke about it earlier, but I want you to really get into it. Talk to us. Yes. So 
So deep down inside, it's all about helping entrepreneurial and professional women really dig into their God design purpose. So many times, especially as, as women, we just kind of float to and fro a little here and there. Sometimes we get caught up in the people pleasing um, thing. We don't always have a lot of confidence in ourselves due to some of the things and trauma that we may have had in life. And so as she bossing up, we actually help women really look deep inside and just the little tiniest glimpse of I'm enough. Mm -hmm. I am truly fearfully and wonderfully made. I am here to do great things. Each day I wake up, God is calling me to do something and he's letting me be here so I can do the thing. I'm valuable. I'm purposeful. I am necessary to this world for some reason. And the thing is, I love it because it can be the mom that stays at home and does business at home. It can be the mom that goes to work and does some things operating a business part time. It could be the single woman who is going ahead and figuring out, you know what, I love my job, but I need a little extra something, something on the side. I don't know what I want to do, but I want to make that happen. And it could be just anybody who's like, you know what, this job is absolutely horrible. I feel like I'm going to die every single day that I wake up Monday through Friday going there. This is not it. There has to be more. And they're ready to leave their job and start their business, but they just don't quite know where to go, what to do. Uh, we help the women who bounce to and fro. Every shiny object is their thing. This person tells mm. them they can make money doing that, and so they go to that. This person tells them they enjoy doing this, so they go doing that. No, we want to help you get clarity and find understanding in what you're doing and to value yourself, your time, your whole being in existence. That is why we deal holistically. We don't just help start businesses. We don't just do mindset and leave it there. We deal with the woman as a whole. So that way, when it comes to purpose and living dreams out loud, she can plan that thing out completely and take little steps to get to where it is that she's going to ensure that when she gets there, it's not going to be a failure type situation where, oh, okay, I'm just not going to do it. It's, I'm done. No, there are going to be hiccups and there are going to be obstacles, tests and trials. The Bible tells us they're going to happen. Where most people get caught up is they don't actually believe that. The moment you believe that tests and trials happen and they actually happen for your good and you start to embrace them and use them as stepping stones to get to where you're trying to go, man, life becomes so much brighter because you already, you know it, and you're already starting to contingency plan things. And then when stuff happens, you don't just stop. And so this is what we help women do, get clarity, find the confidence, start to reframe the way they view things, start to prioritize themselves. Because at the end of the day, we all know you can't pour from an empty cup no matter how hard we try, and we all try it. <laughs> but making sure that we're constantly filling ourselves up to be able to pour out and understanding that that is not just okay, but it's necessary. That's what we do. <laughs> Absolutely. And I'm just very curious, Dr. James, in your movement, is it mostly strictly towards women? <laughs> Yes. So I'm one of those. I would say males are my outliers. So God has given me a passion assignment to help women, but I actually do coach some men. It's very interesting um, how that goes. Some have seen my message. They've seen what I do. And here's the thing that most people don't get. And I, I'm looking forward to partnering with a man on this because I think it will go over very well. Um, the message in the Bible, the verse in psalm 139 14 i'm fearfully and wonderfully made women take that thing and we embrace that and we go forth with it we have it on t-shirts and we just run with it and we are there and yet it was a man david that penned it but you don't see a lot of men saying i'm fearfully and wonderfully made and realizing that they too are enough and so in essence the only thing that i really say that's different between a woman and a man is that our value is far above that of rubies and pearls, but everything else applies to men and women. But God has just called me to women, but I do coach men too, because identity is identity. When you find your identity in Christ and realize that there are biblical principles that establish the foundation of who you are, it transforms everything about what you do, how you move, how you think, just everything, your whole being is changed. Absolutely, absolutely. And yeah, no, that's the reason why I asked you that, because I see a lot of, um, well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to put it to you this way. I, I think maybe you had this conversation before. Um, I, I, I see a lot of women entrepreneurs, right? A lot of w women coaches. And uh, trust me, I totally get it, right? You definitely want to be clear. You want to have your, your niche and everything. Mm -hmm. And 
I trust me. I I totally get it. Right. Nothing wrong with that. If that's if that's what you've been called and assigned to do, then you know I'm not I'm not here here to judge you. But I also learned too in my 11 years of experience of being an entrepreneur, that can kind of shoot you in the foot. And here's the reason why: because you will have a small percentage, right, of men that may be following your content and may feel like you know what man, I truly resonate to what she's saying. Mm -hmm. And I want to be a part of that tribe, but because in every single um, every single piece of content or your messaging is only geared towards women, so now what you do, you're kind of alienating yourself. And that guy is like, well, okay, well, sure, <laughs> well I guess I won't, I won't join and I'll take my money elsewhere, mm -hmm. right? And obviously... <laughs> You know, when I realized that, I was like, oh, so I glad on how on, on how you just explained that, too, because that that was awesome. That was definitely wonderful. Um, Dr. James, I also know, too, that you've done speaking engagements before. That's actually how me and you met. Yes. You want, you want to talk about that? Yeah, so we participated in the Comeback Champion Summit, and I absolutely, I really love doing that with Shay Brown. My topic there is because people look at me and they, because of like how I present myself, I don't seem like I'm an introvert, but I'm actually a high level extreme introvert with extrovert tendencies <laughs> um, is what I like to say. So I can come out and do stuff like this. Um, I can speak virtually speak i can speak on stage in front of thousands of people and i'm not disturbed in the moment if you will right. but right. even going to social networking events large events small events my type of introversion is i can be social in pockets but i'll have to pull away um at some point depending on how but even how long the event is so in like a three-hour event i can guarantee you i'm going to find myself in a corner somewhere by myself and apparently that's my subconscious attempt to recharge and i didn't even realize it until i thought about it one day i've actually been like this because i was telling myself maybe i'm not an introvert i'm just saying that but i've mm -hmm. actually been like this since i was little we used to have huge family parties and when i look back literally every single party that we had i found some way to be by myself in a room um the bed watching tv or something just some pocket of time by myself if it's more than a couple of hours because i just need that time to recharge yeah. so i'm not the introvert who can't speak in front of people just by nature of what god has called me to do and the positions um and the jobs that I have, and even at church, I can't be the one who doesn't talk. I'm a leader in pretty much everything that I've do and that I've done. So I have to be able to talk and interact with people and thing. But I just need the alone time to recharge. So even something like that, going and attending the event, even just looking at it virtually, when I've even looked at some stuff a whole lot or been a part of um, memberships and there's just a lot of like text message interaction, I literally have to take breaks and have to go just pull away a little bit. And so I like to speak to um, introverts, especially introvert entrepreneurs, because there's this drive to just behave like extroverts. And you don't have to behave like that all the time, but you do have to understand what type of introvert you are and learn how to play with your introvertness. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense and i was in agreement a lot of times because i find myself like that like i i literally i'm a person i can really talk to the cows come home i i mean you can put me in a room of 100 200 a thousand 10 million people it doesn't make a difference and i will you know speak and we'll have a great time especially to it if i'm doing the talk i'm going to just you know present it with full thunder but like you up to a certain point i do find myself a lot of times you know yeah i can be super social but then i will find myself like literally just being to myself and i guess i you know i really didn't think about it like that you know that would just be a way of me just really just recharging right and i didn't look at it that way so very fascinating very fascinating <laughs> interesting Dr. James, what is next in store for you, ma'am? So next in store is I am launching a membership platform that I am absolutely excited about. It is the SBU Nation. It's where we're going to have groups of women coming together and really just doing life together, learning, growing, redefining ourselves, identifying skills, gifts, and talents, learning how to overcome 
struggles and setbacks, learning how to springboard um, from obstacle to obstacle and use it like it's stepping stones. We're going to have master classes and we're going to have resources and databases for the women. And I am just so excited about that, have the wait list open for it. And I am just looking forward to really helping women not live the humdrum life, not just get up every single day like I used to get up and go to work. Again, remember, I didn't have the story of I couldn't keep a job or my income right. wasn't right or anything like that. My income was okay. My job was good. I was a manager and a director of human resources. So I was making good money, but right. I just wasn't satisfied. I mean, every morning I'd wake up, it was one of these. Oh, why? Mm -hmm. Like just disgruntled. Every single day I had to go to work. And then when I started working remotely and my office was literally like right by my bed, I would turn and look at my computer and be like, Ugh. I mean, just disgusted with wow. how I had to spend my day simply because it, I know it's not what I was supposed to be doing. It's what I was settling right. for because right. I got tied into the comfort of a steady paycheck. A steady paycheck is a crippling thing. It is like kryptonite for someone who is supposed to be in business and who's supposed to seriously be using their gifts and talents to transform lives. Absolutely mm -hmm. horrible. And I got caught up in that like wholeheartedly to the point where on a couple of occasions, God was like, okay, you're not going to let go of it. I'm going to let go of some things for you mm -hmm. um, to make the way to ensure that I'm doing what needs to be done. You know, it just, it's one of those, I don't want to see that for any other woman. I want to see them thriving and really living in their purpose and their calling and what they, they desire to do and what God has called them to do boldly is the whole purpose there. Absolutely. And you know what, especially, and it's something in which that I mentioned as well too. Now is definitely the time. Now is most certainly the time. I said this before and I'll say it again. Is that, you know, you'll have individuals that will say, well, I'm not ready yet, right? Maybe next year, and maybe if I get this degree, and maybe if I get that job and get this and get that. Here's, here's the thing. Tomorrow is not promised, right? Within the next five not. seconds, you know, it's not promised. So one of the things in which I learned is this, is that when you're giving gifts and talents, you know, from the most high, it is yes. your job and responsibility and obligation alone to use those times to the best of your ability, not just for yourself, not just to yes. serve you. No, 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 no. I had to learn that it's to serve others. And in turn, Absolutely. when you're working in your gift and your passion, guess what? Your gift will make room for you. And that is a true statement, a very mm -hmm. true statement. So I'm just so happy and thankful on Dr. James that you just decided to say yes to your calling. And now, yeah. like, man, you've just been elevating and elevating. And this is just the beginning here. So I know as far as there's going to be a whole lot more in store. So I know a year from now, next time when we have you aboard being a guest, we're going to be hearing some huge and big things that I know that for a fact. Yeah. I already so know. You. I already know. Yes. Dr. James. How how can people get get a hold of you if they want to find out more about you as far as w with your movement, w with your groups, your programs, anything else that you got going on? How, how can people get a hold of you? Yes. So you can go ahead and go to shebossinup.com. That is S H E B O S S I N up.com so she up.com no g and that's where you'll find the waiting list and then you'll be able to get um contact with me that way and i can be emailed to redefined at she up.com and then i'm also here on facebook as dr brianna james and you can see my name there b-r-e-a-n-n-a-j-a-m-e-s with the dr in the front so you can definitely get in contact with me feel free to go ahead and dm me i do respond um, to things and i would absolutely love to connect with anyone here who desires something more in life maybe you need a little clarity maybe you just don't know what quite to do you know you want to do something i absolutely would love to help you get a grip on that Excellent. Before we leave to Dr. James, um, just make sure to um, that you type all your print information in the comment section. And afterwards, I'm going to get your email just because I'm going to send you over a copy of this. Um, are, are you familiar with Devil's Advocate? A little something there, okay. yes. Devil's Advocate. So if you've been following me for quite some time on my podcast, I like to do something where I like to turn the tables a bit. Okay. And with that, it goes in your 
case something like this. Dr. James, I hear what you're saying. Absolutely. Everything what you said is amazing, right? You mm-hmm. accomplished so much. And because, you know, you're a woman of color, a black woman, I s- salute you. But look at here. Right, right now, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I got a lot going on. I ain't got the degrees. You know, I'm bouncing around from paycheck to paycheck. Yeah, mm-hmm. I got an idea or two, you know, but I don't think this entrepreneurial thing is really, really working for me. You know, it's like, mm, I don't know. I don't know. You know, I need I need this and I need that and I need this and I need that before that can even come to happen, right? And the social media, man, I don't know who to even trust. It seems like everybody seems Absolutely. like that they're really sincere. And then all of a sudden they want to blow me, blow me up as far as my messengers and want to sell me the next shiniest thing. And look, I ain't got that kind of time of patience. I I look, I got 10 kids, man. I got baby daddy issues. Okay. I ain't got time for all that, right? I ain't got time for all that. So my question to you, okay. Dr. James, if there was someone that was right in front of you mm-hmm. and literally she stepped into your office yes. and just dropped all that on you, oh. right? Based upon everything in which that you mentioned here on this podcast, mm-hmm. I want you to look in front of the camera while I respond here to these messages. That's why I keep looking down for about five minutes. And I want you to speak to that individual. What would you tell her? Absolutely. Well, the, the first thing I do is honestly ask a series of questions. And my series of questions is, or well, first statement is, it's not about me. Everything that I do is going to be about you. So my question is, are you worth your time, your effort, your energy? Are you worth taking the time to figure out who you are, what you desire to do? And here's the reality. Entrepreneurship may not be for you. It's not for everything. Entrepreneurship isn't for the faint at heart. But if you're willing to sincerely take a little bit of time just to identify what does work for you? What are your skills? What are your gifts? What are your talents? What has God designed you to do specifically for you, your assignment, the people you need to reach, what you need to do? That very well could be on a job. And I help women actually progress on the job as well. I have 14 years of human resources background. It's all about what is best for you and what God has called you to do. So one Once you realize you are sincerely enough, you are worth your time, your effort, and your energy. You have everything on the inside of you to do what you were called to do, what you were purposed to do. Once you buy into that, a simple conversation with me that is absolutely free just takes your time, which is your most valuable asset. And so that's something that I don't take lightly. Once you Mm -hmm. take your time to see about you and you're open, I will willingly help walk you through what it is that you need to do what you need to do. Everything that I do is about you. So you let me know if you want to take the time for you, and I will avail myself for you. And you can bring your kids, too. It's all good. Awesome. Awesome. (laughs) Dr. James, a bonus question. And I was just looking looking at my spirit animal here, which is a tiger. Anybody that knows me, they know I have this thing called the eye of the tiger because me, I must have an individual that when I'm I'm truly passionate about something, I'm relentless, man. I'm like a Mm -hmm. tiger, man. I don't give up, man. And I want to ask you, based upon uh, what I'm feeling from your spirit and your personality, what would you say Mm -hmm. your spirit animal would be? Yeah. And the last time I actually looked it up, I believe I was a lioness. The last time I looked it up. And it's kind of befitting. I I go out there, I hunt, I'm proud, I do what I need to do. I am extremely protective. But at the same time, you know, I'm all about the tribe. I'm all about the people around me. God has called me to help and to do. Um, And so it works for me. I, I like being the lioness. I, you know, there's a little bit of roar in there, you know. I could bite a little bit when I need to, but at the same time, it's all the protection and the making sure that the tribe has what the tribe needs. And so I'm, I recall it being a lioness. It makes sense. It makes sense. Cool, cool, cool. So you heard it first from lioness, Dr. <laughs> Brianna James. We're, we're going to go ahead and rebrand her by lioness. 
I like that. I like that. <laughs> cool, cool. A- a- anything else you would like to leave for the listening audience, Dr. James, before we go ahead and wrap this up? Um, absolutely. I just encourage everyone just to really look within yourself and to see where you are. Do a little, a little self-assessment and to see um, whether you desire, you know, to contact me or whatever case may be. It doesn't matter if there's something that you desire to do and you don't know. Contact somebody to get the assistance that you need. If you're tired of the constant downward spiral, the waking up and feeling inadequate waking up and feel like there's got to be more like you need something extra do not allow yourself to stay there there is help there is an answer there is something for you even if it's you're going on youtube and googling motivation googling a how to it doesn't matter or youtubing a how to it doesn't matter whatever you need to do to get to what it is that you feel burning on the inside of you to do do not sell yourself short do not sabotage yourself Make sure that you get what you need when you need it. God has provided so many resources out there for you. All you got to do is be humble and willing enough to say, you know what? I could use that and I need that. And go get that thing and live boldly and enjoy your life. Don't just survive. Thrive. Very, very true. Very, very true. And I I won't even go a step further. If you're a woman and you're like, man, I got so much in which I want to do, but I just don't know where to start, what to even do. I highly recommend to contact Dr. James because she will definitely go ahead and, you know, get you taken care of. And she brings also that uh, feminine energy, which is definitely great. But also she has that masculinity as well to hold you accountable and be like, all right, now, come on, sister. You say you're going to do this and that. Let's go ahead and get it done. Get it and done. that's and that's what you need. So mentorship and coaching to me is so important. I just believe in order for you to be successful in this life, it's something that's non-negotiable. Yeah. And that's just my, my stake on it. Some people may bust me down, but that's okay. But that concludes episode 112 from the Small Business Network Podcast and yeah. Transformation Greatness. I thank you so much, Dr. James, uh, for this coming on here and being transparent and really just, you know, letting others know that it's possible because it truly, truly is. And guys, if you found value in this, please feel free to, you know, put your comments in. Please reach out to Dr. James, find out more, connect with her, and definitely take advantage as far as on what she has to offer because it is something of great and tremendous value. And of course, if you're watching this and you're like, you know, this is pretty cool. I, I like what these guys got going on. I would love to be a co-host, see what that looks like. By all means, get in contact with myself. If you said, you know what, I- I've been an entrepreneur for quite some time, or I got a dream, I got a brand, I got mm-hmm. a message, mm-hmm. and I would love to be on radio or TV, but I ain't got thousands and thousands of dollars to even commit. Let's have a conversation. Let's have a conversation. Conversation. I have some information for you. I believe that can be very helpful. And I believe you will like as far as on what, what you will see. So until then, family, I'm going to end this segment like been doing all of our others here. And if what we stated on here either motivated, transformed, or inspired at least one person, at least one person, then may God be the glory. We take no credit for absolutely none of it. And until then, y'all have been fantastic. Again, Dr. James, I appreciate you hailing all the way from the West Coast, hanging out with me. It's truly an honor. And we got to definitely do this again. And until the next episode, family, peace and love. It's been a pleasure. Indeed.